So there's lots of videos online right now on how to create your own solar filter from cardboard, which is fine. Or sometimes just taking the solar filter and wrapping it around the end of the scope with some rubber bands and everything. I wanted something that was going to last longer and look a little bit nicer, easier to store. So I came up with a design to 3D print my own solar filter. Obviously still got to buy the film, but it's nice, solid, sturdy. It's going to last quite a long time. So I wanted to do two things. I want to show you guys what I did, first of all. And second, and what this video really is about is I've decided to create custom fit 3D models of solar filters per your specifications free of charge i'm not going to charge anything for this i'm going to put them up on my shop on buymeacoffee.com we'll go over how all it's going to work if you don't own a 3d printer keep watching don't click away i have a, a very possible solution for you so you can actually do this yourself too so let's get to it my name is rich and you're watching deep space astro So like I just mentioned, I wanted something that if I was going to build, it was going to last quite a long time for me. And I don't have to be super careful with it and worried about it being torn or ripped or anything like that. So this is my solar filter that I made for my Red Cat 51. You know, obviously because it's 3D printed, it's going to last quite a long time. The second reason I wanted to do it, and actually I already purchased this before I bought my 3D printer at the end of last year, I bought a Thousand Oak solar filter for the Red Cat. This cost me about $60. In the end, to print this and buy the solar film, I'm at about $13. So a big difference. Now, I know because this is aluminum, th Thousand Oaks is probably more of the expensive options and there are probably less expensive options out there, but probably nothing cheaper than what we're going to do here today with the 3D printer. So here's how this is going to work. I'll leave a link in the description to my Buy Me A Coffee page. On that page there, I have a shop now. Right now, at the time of this video being published, there's only one option out there and it's for the Red Cat 51 outside diameter of that scope is 80.5 millimeters so the first thing i want you to do is to go to the shop and make sure what you need isn't already available again if you're just watching the video as soon as it came out there's only one but check there first if what you need is not there send me an email rich at deepspaceastro.net and specify the outside diameter of your telescope and i will create a 3d model for you i'll put it on my shop at that point in time let you know when it's up there give me two or three days maybe a little bit longer maybe a little bit faster just depends once the model's up there just if you have a 3d printer you know how to do this print it buy your solar film buy the felt tape and we're going to go through how to assemble this thing as well in a few minutes i'll leave links to both the solar film and the felt tape in the description right now now, the solar film for a four inch square is going about eight dollars they have bigger ones i'll link those as well obviously the bigger the film that you need the more expensive it's going to be but i think in the end it's still going to be less expensive than buying from a manufacturer and better than cardboard and something you can say that you built yourself uh, the other thing too is is when you put your request in for the custom model please just do that in email don't leave it as a comment in this video don't reach out to me on instagram or facebook that's just too much for me to field and, and keep track of so i'll request send it to my email account i'll let you know when it's done put it up on the store and then you can go and hit the purchase button like i said it's free there is an option there to pay what you want if you want to throw me a couple bucks but that's totally up to you now if you don't have a printer or you don't know somebody that has a printer that can print this for you check your local library a lot of them have workshops where they allow you to use their 3d printers or you give them the file and they'll print it for you i've heard of some of them doing it for free my local library actually does it and they charge 10 cents per gram so this model that i printed with the retaining ring that holds in the solar film and two dust caps use 56 grams of filament so five dollars and sixty cents if i was to have taken this up to my local library so check with your local library the other thing you want to ask them about too when you're there is how large of an item they can print for you right i can make your solar filter as large as you need it to be you want to check to be sure that they can print something that large right my printer i can go i believe up to almost 10 inches that's pretty huge that film's probably going to be a lot more expensive than the four inch one that we're talking about here today but you know just ensure you know what you're getting into before you ask me to make the model for you and you take it up there and maybe they don't have a very large printer it can only do up to a certain size so next step is i'm just going to show you guys once you have this printed and you have your solar film and the felt tape that we're going to put around the inside of it just how to assemble everything it's simple but i'm going to go through it anyway so everybody's clear on on the intent for the design but just to recap if you want a custom solar filter start by going to the shop on my buy me a coffee page looking to see if what you need is already there if it's not send me an email rich at deepspaceastro.net let me know your outside diameter of your scope. And one more important thing I should have mentioned about that too. When you measure the outside diameter of your scope, watch and make sure that it is in fact the widest part of the front of your scope. And what I'm talking about, and it's like in this image here, this is a William Optics GT71. 
right on the edge of that scope you see that black ring it sits just proud of that dew shield so much so that if you measured the scope and didn't take the the ring into account then the filter may not fit or it fit really tight neither of which you want to have to deal with so just take a close look at everything before you measure it send me the outside diameter in millimeters and then we'll go from there last thing i want to say is i'm not sure how long i'm going to do this for i'm thinking at least until the solar eclipse here on april 8 2024 i may continue to do it afterwards it just depends how this goes bottom line is i'm going to reserve the right to pull the plug on this at any time for any reason if things start going sideways if i start having problems with some people give me just give me a hard time it happens you guys you know it's the internet right so, so okay i think that's all i had to cover about how to do this let's move into how to assemble this once you've printed your parts and you've got your solar film and your felt tape okay so as mentioned before this kit comes in four parts so the first one is what's actually going to hold the solar film you can see the little ledge down on the bottom here that's where our solar film is going to go you'll have two caps one for each side for storage and then you also have the retaining ring which once we put the film in here this will sit on top of the film and be secured by a couple drops of super glue or ca glue whatever you have on hand so first thing we need to do is cut our solar filter to size this is a four by four inch i'll leave links to the solar filters in the description what i found initially when i did this i would take my retaining ring tape it in place and then just cut around it and that works but it always ended up being a little bit larger than the housing that it's going to sit into and then i've got to trim the edges up not a big deal but so it works a little bit better instead of trying to cut around the retaining ring is to get like a fine point sharpie or as small as you can it's you still may have to do a little bit of trimming but trace around it without moving the ring that way you have a nice circle and then the idea is to cut on the inside of this mark and that'll make it a little bit smaller. So hopefully it'll drop right in without us having to do any trimming with it. So cutting through two thin, they're thin pieces of cardboard, but you know, it takes a little bit of work. Just try to stay on the inside of your mark and keep that circle as nice as you can. Like I said, they ship the solar film between two pieces of cardboard so it doesn't get damaged, so it doesn't get bent or torn. So we're just gonna leave it in place to protect it as we're cutting around. Like that, set the trash to the side. Now, before I take the solar film out of there, I recommend putting on a pair of nitrile gloves just to keep the oils from your skin. I'm getting all over the solar film itself, up to you. I just like to be safe. It can be clean, but it's thin and it could be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So now we can separate the cardboard and there's our solar film. You'll notice that one side is dark. The other side has a mirror finish to it. The mirror finish is what's gonna face towards the sun. So all we need to do is Place it into the solar cap itself. That sits in there nice. Now just take your retaining ring. Doesn't matter which way it goes in. Push it into place. Make sure it's down all the way. All right, so solar film is in place. And what I have been doing, we're not gonna glue all the way around. The only reason I don't do that is because if someday this gets ripped or torn or just worn out needs to be replaced, thinking it'll be easier to pop that retaining ring out or even cut it with a with a razor blade or something if I just put four spots of glue. So at the 12, three, six, and nine o'clock spot. You can go all the way around if you want, but that's pretty much a permanent solution, I think. The other thing that I don't do, I'm using CA glue here. Even with the fine tips that I have for this, I don't feel comfortable hovering it over the solar film. So I just will pull a little bit of this out and my nozzle is currently clogged. So this is gonna get messy, but I'm just gonna pour a little puddle on the cardboard that we cut the solar film from with the cat back on so I don't have any accidents. And then with a toothpick as an applicator, just get some on the tip. And like I said, we're gonna put a little bit at 12, three, six, and nine. So just four spots just to keep it in place. And that's it, we can lose the gloves now. So before we put the felt tape on, I just wanna show you guys part of the design. And this is my Red Cat 51. Whatever outside diameter that you send me, right? The outside diameter of your scope, like I mentioned before, I make this two millimeter meters wider than the number that you provide and that is because we need to make room for our felt tape that we're going to put inside of it so we have a nice safe fit I mean plastic's not going to scratch the metal but I think maybe possibly often not enough times without the felt tape it may just kind of dull the finish out I don't want that to happen on my expensive scope so but just to show you you don't need to use it unless you want to it's up to you it'll still fit it's not going to fall obviously we're going to be pointing up at the sun but you know it does spin around pretty freely it's on there relatively loosely but 
it'll work without the felt tape. So felt tape's an option. I recommend you doing it. And when you 3D print the model, like I said, it will be two millimeters larger than, than the outside diameter that you provided me. So let's get this tape on and then I'll show you how it fits afterwards. So with the tape, you're just going to have to kind of eyeball it or you can um, work out the math to figure out how long of a piece you need. It's just as easy to do it this way. So I just kind of fit it to where I think it's going to go. You can overlap it just a little bit. We're going to cut the strip and then just peel off the backing. I would just do this as you go. I'll leave a link to this felt tape below. If you buy it from someplace else, just make sure it's one millimeter thick and that the width is going to accommodate the inside of the lens. So we're just going to place it inside, trying to keep it even with the top just so we have kind of a guide to go by something like that and then as we go around we're just going to pull the backing off and then the tape in place okay just like that now we got a nice felt all the way around on the inside and to show you how much better it fits with the felt tape on there slip it on it's a nice snug fit it does not spin and it's also protecting the paint on the scope itself so and it looks really cool right at this point you know if you're setting up getting ready to shoot the sun for the eclipse or any other day you're setting up you put your front cap on to protect it until you're ready to go pull it off when you're ready and then as i mentioned before you have two caps right so one for the bottom one for the top now you're nice and protected Nothing's going to happen to that when you throw it in your desk drawer or on your shelf or wherever you want to keep it. So I hope that was useful for you guys and some of you take advantage of it. Just my way of giving back because this channel is where it's at because of you guys. My subscribers, my viewers, I appreciate all of you guys. I also want to take this time to say thank you to all my members both here on YouTube and buy me a coffee. I appreciate each of you. If you want to see your name at the end of each of the videos, become a member on either YouTube or buy me a coffee. I also appreciate everybody that's made donations both on YouTube and buy me a coffee. That's a wrap for this video. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.